welcome to our balcony garden. I am filming outdoors today and I apologize if there's any background noise that is distracting. We are in the flight pattern and so <laughs> sometimes you'll hear an airplane that will fly above us but I wanted to give you a quick update on our garden and what it's looking like as we're getting ready to turn the corner from the end of September into fall and just to give you some ideas and some hope especially if you are in a small place or you don't have a very large yard or anything and you think you can't grow any of your own food. That is not true. Ooh, there we go. We got hornets visiting us as well. The joys of nature. All right. So let me show you some of what we have here going on in our garden. These plants currently are very beautiful. However, uh, they haven't been producing anything so far. These are both Tomo Teal plants. We did have a farmer friend of ours from our CSA actually tell us that tomatillos are really hard and they take a really long time. So I'm hopeful that they're just taking a really long time. This one is now finally blossoming and so they have to both blossom because you need two tomatillo plants, they cross pollinate. So my goal was to have a great little salsa salad kind of garden kind of thing going on out here but so far nothing's producing there. Our basil was producing like crazy and this is actually over here propagated. Oh I need to pinch off some of these. They weren't here this morning. We're getting the beginnings of some flowers that I gotta take off there but you can propagate basil from basil and basically have endless basil just by cutting off about a four inch piece and then putting that in water and keeping it in water changing the water every few days and then once it has um, grown roots then you can plant it in soil and then harden it off i'll show you one inside that i've got that's getting ready to come out here but both of these are actually propagated off of um, some of our other basil plants we had out here and i have one more of those as well and then here we have our peas that we started and they are going like crazy. It's been a lot warmer than I expected right now. Colorado September is really hit or miss in August. Um, so it has been really warm, but our plants still seem to be hanging in there okay. I'm just hoping that it cools off like it says it's going to here. Then we have our radishes that are about actually ready to harvest already these fall guys. Um, this is a fast growing variety and he was planted down in the soil. <laughs> um, but I think these two are ready and it'll be time to plant some more. This is actually just a flower. Somebody gave us a business card that had seeds planted inside of it. And so I don't know what kind of flowers these will be, but we shall see what we get. Down here and then down here we have some spinach and some ice queen lettuce. I grew some of this earlier this year and it did really, really well in this container. Um, and in this spot, which is a little bit of shade, it seems to be thriving now as well. I harvested some last night for our fish tacos um, of the ice queen. Obviously the spinach isn't quite ready to start harvesting baby spinach, but very, very soon. In this hanging basket, we have the little gem lettuce. This is delicious. It's almost like a little bit of a romaine type crunch to it. Um, it tastes fantastic. So I love being able to come out here and just clip some fresh greens, especially because a lot of times I want just a few leaves and then you don't have to go buy a whole thing and worry about it going bad when you get it straight out of your garden. And then in this pot, we have rosemary because rosemary will need to be brought in. Get rid of that leaf. Rosemary will need to be brought in when the weather starts cooling down, but it's been blossoming a lot and we've harvested some off of it recently, but seems to be doing well and staying going strong for us. And then over here we have cilantro. I'm so excited because our cilantro seeds this spring did not sprout and we ended up having to buy a start and then, um, use them from the starts from the farmer's market. So these are actually our own. I'll have to split these two seeds somehow got like right on top of each other. <laughs> so I'll have to split those out here, but I'm excited that we'll have some fresh cilantro just in time for our jalapenos to start coming in off our CSA and hopefully our tomatillos as well. And then our tomato plant is still going here. This is a determinant tomato plant so it only grows about this high we've got our containers so we've got to think through that 
So this is determinant, which means, like I said, it will only grow so big and then it will also only produce so many tomatoes. It produces them all at once and then it's done but it's still going nice and strong right now. We've got lots of tomatoes harvest to harvest off of here very soon. I'm excited about all these green guys here. This is currently empty, but I'm gonna pop inside and show you what is about to go in here. All right, right inside of our balcony door, I have a few starts that have been going. This gets a lot of the southern facing sun, so it keeps them nice and sunny and it is strong enough to get them growing. Now, this is one of the basil transplants that we had from a plant that was outdoors that we ended up turning into a lot of pesto. If you saw my video on preserving food, you'll see that. If you don't know this about basil, this little spot right here is when it's starting to get ready to flower. So when it starts to do this and you want it to continue producing, you don't want it to flower and go to seed, all you have to do is actually pinch off the flower. So I'm just gonna come down here and pinch that off. I got a couple leaves on there too, but that's okay. So you pinch off the flower and then it will not go straight to seed, it will continue producing. So you'll just have to watch for that. And anytime you see little flowering things, pinch those off if you want it to continue. Um, this is one, like I said, that we transplanted um, and he's ready to get back outside. <laughs> I'll start hardening this one off this afternoon and get ready to um, transplant it out into that hanging basket outside with the other ones. And then in these two little containers, I have some Brussels sprout starts. The Brussels sprouts will go into that large pot next to the tomatoes out there. And honestly, there's probably only space for two of them in that pot. I'm not sure if I even have another place I could put the third one. I didn't expect all three to make it. <laughs> when I lost one of them already, but we'll see. I'm gonna continue um, keeping all three going until I've hardened them off. And then worst case scenario, I pop one in the juicer and add it as sprouts to one of my juices. So we will have that going there. So remember friends, it does not matter the size of the place that you live, whether it's large or small, you have a yard or you don't have a yard. You can practice some homesteading skills. You can become more self-sufficient and not as reliant on grocery stores, which as we found last year, um, can be an important thing sometimes. And then also it was a nice hedge against some of the inflation that we see happening that you have, you have the ability to produce some of your own food. And of course, my favorite part is then also you are getting the most nutritious food possible when you are growing it organically and in really good rich soil and harvesting it right before consuming it when it's been vine ripened then you just can't beat those enzymes and the nutrition that you're getting straight out of the ground as close to the way as God intended us to consume food. It's more easily digestible that way and really nourishes our bodies. They know exactly what to do with it. So I would love to hear, are you growing a fall garden this year? It's not too late in most areas to get it started. Now we are kind of inching on that uh, timeline here in Colorado because our first freeze can be quite a range of times. Um, last year it was on Labor Day. We had 90 degree weather the day before Labor Day and we had like what a foot of snow if I remember correctly at least six inches of snow on Labor Day itself. So that's not in the forecast this year. I'm thankful because I have a garden this year and I want it to continue to producing but in October is usually when we get our first frost. So we, some of these plants are frost hardy and frost tolerant and will do well. Gotta watch a couple of them on the freeze, but of course the tomatoes will not do handle any of that and neither will the tomatillos. So we're hopeful for a long fall growing season, but with some cooler weather here soon. Until next time, take care friends, cheers.